This is a single 2x6 Lego brick, and this is 700 more of them that I used to build a 2 foot tall working Lego arcade game that not only has 3 unique and interchangeable tracks to play with, but also shuts off if you run into another vehicle. All while being powered by a single Lego Power Functions motor and battery box. And at the end of this video, I'm going to test run the finished model on each game to see just how long I can last at a game I made myself. I failed instantly. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I've used this same mechanism a couple times before, but in this video I took it upon my own shoulders to one-up myself and build a better working, cooler looking, and obviously much bigger arcade machine. We all know those arcade games with the cool motorbikes that you can ride on and tilt back and forth, and since my previous three models were controlled by a joystick or steering wheel, I decided the coolest plan of action would be to incorporate the much more satisfying tilt mechanism. And what better way to plan for a build about an arcade game than to go to an actual arcade with a good friend and test it out in real life. And naturally, we couldn't go to an arcade without playing a bunch of the other games too. And finally, after using up almost all the money on our card, getting scammed a few times by the claw grabber, and being ever so close to a hammer jackpot, I tried out my luck on this snowmobile racing game that uses the same mechanism I'm trying to incorporate into my LEGO build. The tilting motion of the bike translates into the turning motion of the snowmobile in the actual game, which turns out to make staying balanced really difficult. So with my newfound knowledge of the game in real life under my belt, I headed home to begin work on the build. We're gonna need a base to hold it all together, so I picked out four 32x16 base plates to build it on. Whatever build that goes here is gonna be really heavy, so rather than dealing with the imminent frustration later, I made sure there won't be any chance of the connection between the arcade machine and motorbike bending and potentially breaking by adding two connection points on each side as well as a way to connect the axle that runs to the bottom. I filled it with a diagonal series of stripes using these 1x1 light blue studs and made sure there was space for this bar to tilt back and forth. Now this part of the build was by far the trickiest, because turning about one fourth of a rotation of a gear into enough motion to get a vehicle from one side of this track to the other is very difficult. It may seem like a simple fix, such as just gearing it up using larger and larger gear ratios, but there is enough wiggle room between LEGO gears that it makes each sequential turn of a gear less and less consistent and accurate to the point where a full 1 4th rotation of this axle doesn't even move the fully geared up output. Wow, that was a lot of gears. I tried other solutions as well, for example, rather than using a long gear train to get the output much higher up where the actual vehicle will be, I attempted using a chain and then using less of a gear ratio at the top. Which theoretically worked, but the same issue as before caused the final gear to coil up a bunch of energy each time and let it all out in one big burst, leading to a very inconsistent and uncontrollable motion from the vehicle. But of course, that wasn't the end of all the problems either. In a last ditch effort to make the mechanism somehow work, I resorted back to my very first arcade game I ever built, because maybe I was just trying too hard to reinvent the wheel. So I went back and rewatched parts of the video to give me ideas on how to make it work, and while I was watching it, I realized just how cool this build could be now that I can order parts and have more experience making things like this. But not only does this have a chance at being the coolest thing I've ever built, it also has a shot at becoming a real LEGO set available in stores all across the world. And since it's been highly requested for my previous models like the driving simulator and racing game, I made it so irresistibly cool that even the LEGO Ideas team won't be able to say no if it hits 10,000 votes. So when you finish this video, make sure you go over to LEGO Ideas and help this project get one step closer to being a real LEGO set. And before I bore you completely by all the nitty gritty details of how the tilt mechanism got working, I'll just say that when using the same mechanism as my original design, it worked almost perfectly except for one fatal flaw. But I'll get to that in a second. With the final mechanism in place, I started building up the walls. And while I build up the model, let me tell you about Squarespace. There's a high chance you already know about them, so I'm just gonna tell you about my three favorite features as well as link below my own website that I made using Squarespace. This race line on the front of the arcade game looks really clean, which is also one of my favorite parts about Squarespace. Not only is it super easy to use, but the simple aesthetics and looks to their entire interface is super clean, not to mention how completely uncomplicated changing the looks of your personal website is. This track guides the axle of the car along a linear axis so it stays in line. It finally works. Another great thing about Squarespace is all the different built-in pages to choose from, whether it's an about me page like this one here, a portfolio or a membership area. There's very little required know-how and a ton of creative freedom to give you the perfect tools to create your own website. Then I'll add this little interface bit with the speedometer and some random dials and stuff in front of the mechanism. And finally, the best part of Squarespace, besides all the stress it takes out of making your own website, is that they have offered all of you guys a 10% off discount when you use code RJMBRICKS at checkout. 
So when you're ready to buy your first website or domain and kickstart your business making dreams with Squarespace, make sure you use the second link in the description and code RJMBricks at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. But anyways, back to the video. As I already mentioned, there was one major flaw with the reuse of my original mechanism and that in order to have the game shut off if you hit another vehicle, the player's vehicle has to be strong enough to force the entire tread structure backwards. But before I even built the on-off switch into the model, I realized that the structure moving the car side to side would sooner bend and potentially snap apart than push back the game stream. So I decided to pivot from a motorbike tilting seat to just a normal chair, which also makes more sense since only one of the three interchangeable games would be well suited with a motorbike. And speaking of the games, here's how they actually work. I used to use these little Technic pins to attach plates to treads to form a screen, but since the LEGO NES has come out, they added a bunch of new parts that do the exact same thing but better. I ordered two more times worth of those parts so I would have enough to make three unique tracks. All of these Technic parts clip into the pinholes on the treads, but since they're only half a pin thick, I used a bunch of these pieces to fill the gap. Then I can put a bunch of plates on top and add different details on each. This one is a swamp and has three different colored plates underneath the layer of water to add depth. I think it's fitting to call it a police chase version of the game, since back in 2015 LEGO released some awesome swamp police sets. So for the vehicles, I made three different colored versions of a swamp hovercraft using hubcaps as the back fan, which looks cool, but I ended up removing it since they kept falling off. The second one is a flight simulator, so I don't have any other planes to run into, which means the plane the player controls doesn't need to be super close to the treads, and I could get a ton more detail in depth into the track. I added a clouded section and a big river, as well as a bunch of different crops, some tiny little roads, and even a super small car and tractor. And finally, the most generic, but in my opinion cool game, the racing game. I just used a bunch of black tiles and added a yellow stripe in the middle. Then I added a bunch of these different colored cars, all facing forwards, which seems like it would be back Backwards, but if it's a racing game, you're technically going to be passing cars, so it makes more sense. The tracks need to be easily switched out, so I built all three identical frames that can slide in and out of the arcade machine. The final mechanism for the actual game uses gear racks to turn the rotation of the steering wheel into a linear motion, and everything is boxed in and super strong so that it can push the tracks back without movement from the actual vehicle. And I used this weird assortment of parts so that the car can't rotate and would be locked into its track. Since the whole build is a somewhat dark color scheme, I built the chair in bright orange with a dark blue strip to tie it in. The angle admittedly is kind of weird and is pretty fragile, but otherwise it's perfect. And to motorize the treads, I want an attachment that can be easily removed and switched. It took way too many renditions, but I eventually stumbled upon the perfect solution. Because of the removability of the motor, it causes some strength issues for the pieces holding it to the frame, but the final result has it flush up against the side of the arcade game, so there's no wiggle room for it to move. There's also a small arm on each frame that connects to the battery box inside the model, so that the movement of the track will turn the game on and off. So with every mechanical part of the model done, it was just a case of building a final outer shell. Besides the wheel, I added vents to look somewhat like a car, as well as some angled and sloped pieces I got with the 700 2x6 bricks. I built up the top of the arcade machine and used a bunch of these long slope pieces that were on the pick a brick wall. For the sides, I used a ton of 2x2 gray tiles to add a cool look and texture, and for the top, I made it look like there was little lights and added one final detail, this cool speed sign. And with the build finally complete, everything working and it looking great, I could put aside my pieces and actually enjoy the experience of playing a 100% working LEGO arcade game. I'm going to start with the flight simulator. Since there isn't anything to hit, it's pretty simple, but it's definitely really satisfying. Then I can switch it out for the police swamp chase, hook the motor up, and try not to hit any of the police boats. That is actually so fun. And if you hit it, the game officially ends. And it works so well, I did not expect that. Time for official round two. We did it, we're away. Come on. Yes. No. That is actually really difficult, but very, very fun. And finally, for track number three, the road. So the final game begins now. I failed instantly, but it's honestly so fun. So I know I can't be go between white and green anymore because it's too tight, or I could try. See, even the slightest touch, even if this comes off to the side afterwards, it still makes it game over. And this just slides back into position, ready to be played yet again. 
Make sure to click the link in the description to start your business with Squarespace, and don't forget to go to legoideas.com to vote for my project to help it get 10,000 supporters and become a real Lego set.